Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going great. I am playing around in Topaz Studio 2 today. It's the new version. I've done a couple of videos on it already and I'll keep doing more. Um, this is a, another video about masking. Um, I did a video which I'll put up there about brush masking and I thought today in this video I'd cover gradient masking. It's just another tool you can use to mask filter effects into your photo. So let's just hop into it. I've got this photo here. I've already added an adjustment layer, which is the basic adjustment. And you can look here and see what I did. Added a little bit of clarity, uh, bumped up the shadows, took down the highlights, and then did a little bit of saturation, temperature, and tint work. So I took the photo. I'll just show you the original. It was like that. It was a, it was a beautiful sunset. This was in Montpellier. I don't think I said that right. Um, in southern France, but it was a beautiful sunset. And I use the basic adjustment filter just to give it a little bit of kick. So I think it's looking a lot better. And I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do with the gradient uh, filter. So, uh, excuse me, the gradient mask applied to a filter. So many words. Um, I'm going to click on add filter and I'm going to click on blur. Now, uh, there's a couple of different types of blur. There's Gaussian blur and diffusion blur. I'm going to use this filter twice. I'm going to use each uh, type of blur. This isn't really a tutorial on the blur filter, although you're kind of going to see it, I guess. Uh, but on this one, I'm going to say uh, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to say amount. I'm going to go to like 30 or something. And as you can see, the whole uh, photo gets kind of fuzzy, right? I mean, it's blurred. That's what the filter does. So here's where masking comes in. You go up here to the filter. It's blur, right? It's its own layer. Each time you add a filter, it's sort of treated as its own layer. You can turn it off there if you want. I'm gonna turn it back on and I'm gonna click this little icon here which says add a mask to this layer. That's what I wanna do. So I click it and it comes up. Now, um, you may have seen in that other video that it defaults to having what's called a white mask which is revealing the effect across the entire photo. I wanna conceal some of it. So if you remember, black conceals and white reveals. But instead of using the brush mask and painting it in or painting it out in this case, I'm going to use the gradient mask. So I'm going to click on gradient and as you can see immediately it applies that gradient mask uh, to the photo. So you can also notice it's starting to pick things up here. This is the mask view and this is one of the great, great things about Topaz is that their masks uh, and their brushes and all that, their masking is edge aware. So it's picking up the edges of that, uh, the top of that church steeple or whatever it is and the hedge. Now. In this case, for what I'm gonna do with the filter this time, I don't really need that. So here's the other thing to be aware of with the gradient mask, and that is you've got this zone here, and so it's multicolored, right? Red, white, and green, and then you've got this center, and the center allows you to move that. Um, you're also able to collapse or expand this zone, and to me, this is the gradient zone, and let me t explain what I mean by that. This is a gradient mask, and you're using uh, the gradient here, sometimes just called the gradient. Um, and as you move this around, you can kind of see that the effect changes depending on where the um, mask or, or the gradient is laying across the photo. So anything that's green, at the green line and below, you're getting 100% of that adjustment. From the green line to the white line, it starts to reduce the impact of that adjustment. From white to red, it reduces even further, and then red and above, you're getting nothing. You're getting zero of that effect. So as you collapse this zone, you'll see these uh, that hedge, as I'm moving the red zone below the hedge, the hedge is now better in focus, whereas up here, it was getting a little bit fuzzy because it's falling in that gradient zone. So that's how the gradient works. Now for, the, uh, for this filter this time, I'm just gonna collapse it pretty tight, and I'm gonna do something like that. Um, Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, shoot, here we go. You gotta be careful, um, it's a little twitchy, um, or perhaps I'm a little twitchy. Um, I, I've got a set about like that, and all I'm trying to do is apply that gradient on the water. And so that's a way, using the Gaussian blur, you can create kind of a long exposure type look in water by kind of smoothing it out and blurring it. It looks like the water's kind of moving a little bit. So. I may or may not actually do that to this photo, but I thought it was a good way to explain how that filter works and of course to use the gradient mask. Then you can just move this up and down to get it in the spot that you want. 
And notice now that it's black up above, so this effect is concealed where it's black, which is above those lines, and white uh, below um, the lines, and that's where the effect is revealed. So in other words, the Gaussian blur is showing up in this white area, which is the bottom of the photo, and it's not showing up in the top of the photo. As soon as you're done, you say apply, and you're done. Um, and that's the blur, a Gaussian blur, applied to the bottom of the photo um, with a mask, a gradient in this case. Now, let's say I want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to go get Add Filter, and I'm going to say Blur. And this time, I'm going to use the Diffusion Blur, and i got to look at my notes. I'm going to go Strength of about 80 or so. Let's see. Here we go. That looks good. Uh, and Softness, I'm going to move that to about 55 and these are just numbers I experimented with, which I encourage you to do. There's no formula for, you know, hey, always use strength of 80 and softness of 55. It just depends on the photo and the look that you're going for. Um, now, once again, it's applying to the whole photo. So I'm going to click on the masking uh, icon to open up the masking menu. And once again, as you can see, it's all white, which means the effect is revealed across the entire photo. But also, once again, I'm going to grab gradient. And it's going to apply that to my photo. Now, here's the thing. I want to stick this one on the top. So I kind of want to reverse this. So I want it to be like that, where it's green up above and red down below. I don't need more blur because the bottom of the photo is plenty blurry. I blurred that with the last filter. So basically, we're not exactly flipping the mask. We're doing it a little bit differently. And this is where I want to point out one of the beautiful things about Topaz, and that is Edge Aware. This is the mask view, as you can see, it's being concealed where things are black and revealed where things are white. Well, you can see in the view that it's following the hedge and the steeple and all that. So you can kind of move this around, um, you know, kind of get it where you want it, move this um, however you see fit, um, maybe something like that. And uh, there's this handy little button over here called adjust. So I'll usually, if it's a not a straight flat line like that, and I want to do some refinement, I'll usually click on adjust. And that opens up this menu. And once again, you've got feathering, which is edge aware. You've also got expand mask and contrast. And usually what I do is I'll just kind of play with these a little bit. Um, and you can kind of see, when I, especially when I hit contrast, it's crisping up the edges there and darkening kind of what's um, like in these hedges. So let me show you. If I take the contrast down, you can see it, it's a lot less um, uh, dense, I guess is the word, like here in this hedge. And as I increase contrast, it's basically becoming fully black, which means it's fully concealed from the hedge. And so um, as soon as you're happy with it, and you can just play with that refinement. Again, something I recommend doing. You can just say apply and you're done. And that's really it. Um, so what I did is I took two filters and stuck them on here. Same filter two times, that is. The blur filter, the first time I did a Gaussian blur uh, using the blur filter applied with a gradient mask just to the bottom of the photo which allowed me to soften up that water, really smooth it out and make it blurry, which makes it kind of dreamy and to me a little bit um, uh, long exposure looking, right? Um, so I like to do that sometimes with photos uh, in water. Uh, and then I used blur again, and this time I did a gradient mask from the top using the diffusion blur. And if you look at the top, you can see there's a little bit more, um, I don't want to call it crispiness, maybe a little bit of noise even, I'm not sure. Um, I just have a, a small JPEG usually that I'm doing these videos with, not a raw file. But um, uh, in this case, uh, you know, you can see a little bit of texture in the sky. And that, uh, that diffusion blur has softened that up a little bit. Again, it creates a little bit of a long exposure effect. Not exactly, because these clouds you might expect to be streaking more across the sky if it was a true long exposure. But mostly I wanted to demonstrate gradient masking. Super powerful, super easy to use, and edge aware, which is one of the great things about masking in Topaz. And that's really it. Two, uh, the same filter twice, but two different kinds um, of blur. But more importantly, using the, uh, the gradient mask really in two different ways. I guess the first one was just a straight gradient. All right, I want everything below the line blurred. And the second one was I want everything above the line blurred. However, I want to customize that a little bit, and I wanted to take it aware, excuse me, take advantage of edge aware masking, which is what allowed me to keep that interesting and you know obviously not straight horizon line of the hedge and that steeple and the other hedge, keep those um, sharp and the rest of it blurred. It's intelligent; it figures it out on its own. 
makes my job easy and your job easy, and that's how it works. So just wanted to walk through gradient masking. Hope it helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. Love to hear feedback on this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care. Adios.